Hey, it's me, the Orange Summoner, and welcome to the Bibbits. Now, this is probably just going to be a real short video, because I'm just going to show you my current progress of my Bibbits. And this is actually, these Bibbits are actually 50 hours of evolution. I know it says 20 up here. However, they did come from a separate save. They, they, oops, hold on. They initially came from this save. Which is massive. And I let crunch for 30 hours. Let me pause it, get some frames back. Anyway, as you can see, there are thousands of these little buggers everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Anyway, we're not here to look at these bibbits. We're here to look at my other bibbits. So what I did is I took three bibbits from this I plopped them into a, a lot smaller of an area. And this is where they are 20 hours later. And if we look at our, their brain structures here, you could see they are very, very complicated. Lots of inputs, lots of outputs, and random things going on in the middle. Oh yeah. This is actually incredible. Oh, this is a new one. Just, just look at the connections. They're they're literally everywhere. And I'm training these guys for the tournament that's coming up. The Bibbits tournament is coming up in July. If you don't know about that, I'll post a link to it in the description. I'll also post a link to the Bibbits project, the the guy that made it. I'll post him in the in the description as well. You should really check this out. It's awesome. Look, they make particles and they make particles. So let's just go over one of the simpler ones. Um, might take a second to find a simple one. They're all too complex. Oh my God! Look at that guy. Holy cow. Uh, some of the bigger ones are older, so they usually have simpler brains. Okay, this isn't that bad. Okay, so we have a constant input going into a hidden sigmoid, activating its acceleration. So it's constantly moving forward. But this is also affected, as you can see, by ferro 3 heading, which is a blue pheromone that they can produce. Um, energy ratio negatively impacts its blue pheromone output, which it doesn't output any blue pheromones anyway. Um, its fullness helps determine its digestion, and that's it. Um, whether it's grabbing or not determines whether it wants to eat or not. Very interesting. Um, the bibbit closeness determines its pheromone 3 out negatively. Not a lot of positive connections, but I don't think it produces blue. Um, plant closeness determines its want to grow. So the closer it's to plants, the more it grows. As you can see, it just lit up. Um, plant angle determines its rotation, and so does meat angle. So it goes for both plants and meat. Very nice. Um, and when it sees green bibbits, it activates its immune system, which is ineffective right now. Um, tick, which is just a constant in-out, in-out signal, affect its click reset, which I don't understand yet, negatively. Um, if it senses a red pheromone, it goes into this junction here, which is controlled by both um, blue heading, blue pheromone heading, and infection rate. And these separate into both its want to grab 
and it's want to produce red, uh, blue pheromones. Negatively, of course. Um, I think that's all of them on the inputs. I think I even covered all the outputs doing that as well. Except for hurting, it doesn't want to hurt. Interesting. Interesting. Anyway. So that's one of the simpler brain structures, and that's that's the basics of what all of these pretty much do. If you were to go through and look at them all, they all kind of do the same thing, but they are all very different. <laughs> wow. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. I just wanted to put this out there and say 50 hours into evolution, this is what I have so far. Ooh, here's a green one. Wow. Ain't that something. Anyway, this is the Orange Summoner, signing off.